Hello, I'm Michael Glass from michaelglass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our video, you want to start off with our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is only your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So this is our stock market technical analysis trading plan. In our video, we'll look at the past week's economic calendar and also look forward to next week. We'll see what happened as far as the most recent price action to identify key support and resistance price levels. We're going to look at the charts of the market leaders, Apple, Google, Goldman Sachs, Priceline. We'll take a look at those. We'll look at the dollar, gold, and crude oil charts to see if there's any leading sentiment. And finally, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. As we look at the week that was, we can see that all three major indexes, the Dow Jones, and NASDAQ, and S&P 500, all basically ended flat for the week. Uh, not a lot going on. We did have the market closed on Monday, but again, uh, although we had a good start on Tuesday, a little shaky there on Wednesday and Thursday. We had positive news on Friday, but it was met with selling. So overall, the market ended flat. Overseas, we see that the euro hit a 16-month low at 1.27. We did get some encouraging manufacturing data out of China, uh, India, and Europe, but China also had some uh, cautious outlook about the growth of the economy, so that kind of... Uh, uh, tempered the, the manufacturing data and also affected the trade on Wednesday and Thursday. Um, we can see that the next round of earnings are going to begin uh, next week. So we didn't have anything this week, but Alcoa is starting us off Monday after the close. So uh, we'll see if, if that the strong earnings that we saw in 2011 can continue. Um, here we can see the employment situation. On Friday, it came in much better than expected, 200,000 uh uh, non-farm world versus 150,000. The unemployment dropped from 8.6 down to 8.5. Definitely was better than expected, but as we said, um, although the positive sentiment before market open, uh, we were met, it was met with selling at the open, and thus again we had a flat week. Now, as we look going into next week, we can see that we do have Alcoa kicking off our next round of earnings, and then J.P. Morgan on Friday. Uh, J.P. Morgan can let us know the status of the banks. And that certainly can be the market. We know the banks are big as far as the S&P 500. And on the economic side, we can see consumer sentiment on Friday also. That could have a big, big move. Nothing else really jumps out to me as big market movers. But again, we always have to be prepared for anything. Let's go ahead and pull up the charts and look at our continued resistance of 1280 to 1300. And again, what's going to be our catalyst? Earnings, consumer sentiment, what's going to be our catalyst to get us above that 200 moving average? We are starting off here with our market leaders, and so that would be our sentiment leaders. So this is uh, the dollar, looking at the dollar, and we can see this great move that the dollar has been in here. And as we zoom in a little bit, actually before we zoom in, uh, let me zoom back out and just show you that way back here, uh, this little test right here back in January 2010 is basically where we are right now. So now we'll zoom in. You can see that's basically where we close right now. So we're can, starting to get out of this most recent range between 79 and 81, 81.50 uh, ish, and now we're closing above that. So dollar definitely looks strong, and we know usually a strong dollar equals a weak market, uh, which is probably why we're going sideways. And also a strong dollar. Remember we said earlier uh, that the uh, euro um, hit uh, 16 months low. So definitely strong on the dollar. Uh, strong dollar, what does that mean for gold? Uh, with gold, zoom on in here. And you can see uh, weakness in the gold. However, in this last little run here in 2012, we've come back up to test the 200 moving average. That we failed the 2 moving average here at the end of December. So it's going to be interesting to see how where we go from here. Uh, we're back in the range between 1600 and 1660-ish, um, but we've got the 200, we've got the 50 moving average, a lot of areas of potential resistance, and we'll see again how that inverse relationship works with uh, the dollar. But right now, the gold is is trying to make a little uh, bounce here, 
And finally, crude oil. We know about our 96 to 102 range we talked about. Here it is right here, acting in that range. Zoom on in a little bit. And again, you can see it there. And now you can see we re-entered it here. So we'll zoom on in there. And we did pop out of it, but we're right back into it. So you can see this 102 continues to be uh, a point of interest for the sellers and the buyers. Sellers are finding value here, trying to push it back down. Um, but the buyers are trying to hold up, so we'll see. Um, so crude oil looks pretty good also, sideways. We are starting off on the daily chart of the S&P 500, and what I'm basically clicking on here for you is this uptrend line that we've been watching, um, and this is sending wedge, and we'll extend this out just a little bit here. Alrighty, so we have resistance of 1300, and the good news is we've been focusing in so long about the resistance of the 200 moving average. And the good news is, not only did we close above it, but we actually did stay above it. Zoom in a little bit more. And you can see a little bit clearly now, we, we opened up here on Tuesday right above it and put in a couple of dojis here since. So that's, that's the good news. Uh, and so if you believe in this chart pattern of the ascending wedge, again, there's our uptrend line. Here's our resistance at 1300. Um, you know, the market needs to resolve itself one way or the other. Ascending a wedge is supposed to resolve itself to the upside. If we do um, break through that 1300 price level, um, you can see we can start heading up here to about 1330. So, um, you know, the market certainly looks good. Our indicators, well, they're starting to get towards overbought just a little bit. Stochastics kind of there. Uh, RSI heading up here to the overbought level. And MACD is heading up also. So, again, it's going to be interesting to see. And, of course, we, as we've been saying, what's our classic catalyst to get above the, uh, the 200? Well, opening a new year. So now we have our new catalyst. What's going to get us above our most recent swing high here of 1300? Zooming out a little bit to the weekly. And again, we can see the overall larger ch channel that we're in. We can see the clear uptrend in the ascending wedge that we're watching. What's nice is we have sort of a rising three pattern right here. Even if we go back here, you know, you can say it's even larger. So the bias here on a weekly is also heading up also. But again, we're coming to our last swing high at that 1300 price level. All of our indicators have more room to the upside on the weekly chart. Finally, on the monthly... Uh, we're starting to see that we're getting above, and this is what we talked about last week. If we can get above 1274, we can start making that run to 1300, and we started to do that here this first week of January. So um, all of this looks very good. The only issue here is that on our monthly, although we're in the middle of nowhere, we're still kind of um, heading back up to over by We never fully got over oversold on the monthly chart, but, you know, we don't have to. So um, definitely looking stronger here for the S&P 500. Let's uh, zoom on out, see if the NASDAQ, which was lagging, we'll see if it has caught up. I'll zoom on in here for you. And it's starting to catch up. You can see that it's still just barely at the 200 moving average. But you can also can see our uptrend line with uh, the resistance of 2740 at the top. So we still have an ascending wedge that we're watching. Zoom a little bit more. But you can also see that we just ever so slightly put a doji above the 200 moving average. So we're still lagging just a little bit behind the S&P 500, but the S&P 500 is just above it also. So in the end, where the S&P 500 opened above the 200 and it went doji, 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 the NASDAQ basically has had some up candles here to allow us. And remember, the NASDAQ was the one index this week that rose up for the week. So um, on our daily, we have plenty of room here. All of them have uh, room to go up, although Stochastic is getting closer to overbought. When we zoom on out to the weekly, um, and now we'll zoom in, we can see, again, our uptrend line. We can see the nice move here. Uh, looks like we bounced off the 50 million average. That's great. But again, we still have our resistance at 27.35. Um, our indicators are all kind of in the middle of nowhere with room to go higher. 
and finally all the way out to the monthly and zooming in uh, we, again, we can see this overall channel between 23.50 and 27.40 uh, that we've been watching. And again, if we can break out of that, we can go and retest the May 2011 highs. All right, we are starting off here with the Apple chart. And you can see that as we start off our new year, we're retesting the uh, October high of 426 uh, closing at 422 here on Friday um, so you know we're, we're getting ready to head into some blue skies here if we can get above these wicks here so we're probably going to find some resistance here some sellers may try to find value here keep in mind Apple did announce that they're going to have a, a media event and also they also always have their earnings coming up and they have their conference this month also so a lot of catalysts coming up this month here for Apple and a lot of discussions about whether or not there's going to be a new iPad 3 coming out shortly um, and, and again on our new channel uh, you, you make the call stocks we're going to get into more detail about that but looking at the chart we can definitely say Apple is bullish look at this move up here um, and because of uh, the gap that we see here that's why we don't see a lot of volume here on the market profile and we're starting to accumulate here in that 422 range so Apple definitely bullish Amazon Amazon obviously has been in a downtrend since November open up here a little bit we can see that ever so slightly it's uh, it's found some support here at the 500 moving average moving up maybe a run up here to the 50 however looking most recently here's a, a failure at the 20 here's a failure at the 20 so it's gonna be interesting to see what happens here if we can get above this 185 we may now that we're into this range of 180 to 196 you know maybe we will make that run um, and now look at the market profile we have a lot of volume accumulating at 177 I'm gonna say sideways on Amazon uh, Google <clears throat> Google uh, starting a new year off at uh, uh, a high 670.25 zooming a little bit more one thing I want you to see is that this whole move up here the 20 moving average acted as support we'll zoom in a little bit more whoops let's do that again there we go we can see that 20 moving average holding up here as support so now we pulled back to that 20 moving average uh, being a uh, 10 moving average so actually we do have a little more room to go um, well, even the 10 acted as support, so we may we may we'll have to see what happens here. We did get just below the point of control. There is some volume support down here at about 641, uh, which would be right here around where this 20 moving average will be. So either way, sideways to up here on Google, Goldman Sachs. Uh, we talked about J.P. Morgan having earnings on Friday for financials. You can see this descending wedge that we're watching. Uh, 50 moving average acted as resistant most recently, even though we popped through it a couple times. Um, but our downtrend trend line is also acting resistance here at 96. So this one we are still going to say sideways to down. Uh, IBM. IBM is just enjoying its channel that it's in. A lot of sideways price action. So not much going on with IBM. I'm just going to say sideways. Intel. Intel finally made a little move up here. That's certainly nice. I'm sitting at resistance of 25, 25, 25-ish. Um, the last little high here at 25.78. So you know, we'll see if we're going to go retest this. But this is typically a place where sellers have found value to push it back down. So what's going to be our catalyst to move us right back down here to the point of control of 24.50? Mastercard, little little disappointment here. Um, you know, beautiful chart here, obviously, on our daily. Uh, but you can see most recently uh, this, uh, this move here in, in January put us right on back here to the 340 support price level. So, uh, you know, at this point, we have to wonder if we're going to come down here and test the 200. Uh, if we break this 340 where we saw a lot of action before, uh, it definitely looks like we're going to go here. So I'm going to say sideways, maybe even sideways to down here on MasterCard. Uh, Netflix. Netflix had uh, some positive move. Uh, a lot of talk about whether or not it's going to be taken over. So we, we've got we're in this channel for a month, and now we're up here at the 
50 moving average. Um, so we'll be interested to see what happens here at still got to get to 92 to get into this last swing high here. Uh, but again, a lot of this New Year action was over whether or not they're going to be taking over. Uh, and finally, Priceline hanging out in this channel. Remember, it's in a huge channel, uh, most recently tested in uh, December, and now it's coming up, hanging out in the middle. So Priceline definitely sideways. As we come to our education spotlight, we're talking about one of the things that separates our winning and losing traders, and that's the basic understanding. And you know, we talk so much about the psychology of trading, but winning traders know that there is no uh, thing as a perfect 100% trading system, nor is there a perfect trader. As a part of our trading system, we have to factor in that there's going to be losses, or as we say, the cost of doing business. Um, it's not about you being right or wrong. It's about um, letting the system work out, having that positive expectancy because we back tested our system so that we know that we're going to have seven out of ten winners or six out of ten winners based upon you know your profit win loss ratio that's going to allow you to be profitable. Um, and so you know we don't expect to win every trade, and we know that we just have to let our system work, and over time we're going to be successful and we're going to make consistent profits. Again, please like, comment, subscribe to our channel. Next week is the big, big beginning um, of our, our push for uh, some new channels to give you detailed information about some of our big market mover stocks. So uh, make sure you like, subscribe so you can get the latest information. Facebook, we have a page, Are You Financial Literate? And we have Boo Mike on Twitter and YouTube. We're also going to have some new resources for you here in 2012. Um, we're always going to talk about our mentoring, how we can help you develop that trader's mindset so that you can be a consistent, profitable trader. Uh, we have a great system for you to be a great, successful day trader. We're not charging two, three thousand dollars as most gurus out there charging. A simple hundred dollar investment uh, that allows you to also spend the time and have the money to invest into your mindset, your psychology of trading, and for your coaching. Um, if you're looking for futures, we got a broker for that, and of course, we got a charting package for you that works both on PCs and Macs. In the end, it's about developing who you are as a trader, knowing who you are, aligning that up with your trading system, and that's what we can do here through our coaching program, our mentorship program. It helps you build that psychological capital so that you can pull the trigger on each and every trade. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.